why and how everything moves. Forces, laws of motion, speed, velocity, acceleration, gravity, momentum and many more will be discussed in, in this video series. Welcome in a journey into classical mechanics. Hello and welcome in this episode of a journey into physics. Today we're going to discuss about multidimension motion. In the previous episode we discussed about vectors. Now we are going to use vectors in order to understand the two dimension motion, the three dimension motion and in general the n dimension motion. Now let's get on to the two dimension motion. Let's start with the two dimension motion. First of all we're gonna draw our two axes. The y axis and the x axis. And here is the start of both our axes. Now for example we're gonna draw the movement of our object. And we're gonna pick a random point in that movement. For example here. We're gonna draw the line, a straight line, from the start of the axis to the point where that we chose. And this depicts the vector of distance. In that time we can see that the movement in its axis can be derived by the Pythagoras theorem. So the vector of distance is the sum of the distance of x axis, axis multiplied by its unit vector. The distance of the x axis multiplied by its unit vector plus the distance in the y axis multiplied by its unit vector. We know that speed is always parallel to the motion. We can use Pythagoras theorem to find out the speed in the y-axis and the speed in the x-axis. So that speed is the change of distance over time. And that means that the speed is then changed in the distance over time in its axis multiplied by its unit vector. And finally we have the acceleration
with a change of speed over a time and it's the sum so acceleration it's the sum of the change of speed in each axis multiplied by its axis unit vector for example it's the the change in the speed in the x-axis multiplied by vector i plus the change in speed of the y-axis over time multiplied by the j unit vector. Now that we have figured out the two-dimension motion we're going to continue to the three-dimension and to the n-dimension motion. In order to understand the three-dimension and the n-dimension motion, we will make an array of the distance, the speed and the acceleration in each dimension. Let's start with the first dimension. You know that distance? It's just the change of the distance traveled over time in an axis. We also know that speed is the change of distance over a time multiplied by its vector, unit vector. And acceleration is the change in speed over time by multiplied by its unit vector. Let's move on to the second dimension. We know that distance is the sum of the distance of the distances in its axis multiplied by its unit vector. We know that speed is the change in distance over time in its axis multiplied by its unit vector. And finally, the acceleration is the change in speed over time in its axis multiplied by its unit vector. We can see already that from the first dimension, the second dimension motion, there is a pattern. The distance always equals to the distance in its axis multiplied by its unit vector and we, all, we add them all together. So, in the, thir in the three dimension motion, the distance is again the sum of the distances in its axis multiplied by their unit vectors. Again, the speed is the change in distance in each vector multiplied by each unit vector and then add together.
and finally the acceleration is the sum of the change in speed in each axis multiplied by each unit vector. And finally, we can understand that in any dimension motion, the change, the distance, is equal to the distance, the sum of the distances in each axis multiplied by the each unit vector. And the speed in any dimension motion is the change in the sum of the change in uh, distance over time in each axis multiplied by each unit vector. And finally, the acceleration is the sum of the change in speed in each axis multiplied by each unit vector. hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe, comment, share this video. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The links are below in the description. In the next episode of A Journey to Physics, we're going to take everything that we have learned about this two dimension, the three dimension motion, and use them in order to understand exactly the projectile motion. For everyone who have missed the series introduction video or the other episodes of the Classical Mechanics miniseries, links are above on the YouTube cards. I would like to thank you for all of your support and I hope you liked this new video format. Thank you again and see you in the next episode of A Journey into Physics.